Hello colleagues of ENGR325. We are group four of lab L1C. My name is Kiana and my colleagues Nelson, Josh, and Cameron will be presenting ultra high performance concrete, why it is important, how it's made, and current and future applications for it. Ultra high performance concrete, also known as UHPC, is a very ductile and high strength material. It is claimed to have a strength of six to eight times that of conventional concrete. This ultra high performance concrete achieves this quality mainly because it's whole metal fibers which makes it very ductile. Ultra high performance concrete has a combination of Portland cement, silica fume, quartz flour, fine silica sand, high range water reducer, water and organic fibers. Ultra high performance concrete offers a sustainable solution to improve the future ways of constructions by offering very low porosity and improved fatigue factor leading to outstanding resistance against aggressive environments. The durability of ultra high performance concrete was tested and it was found that it can withstand over 300 freeze thaw cycles with no signs of degradation. This testing indicates that this type of concrete could be very beneficial in areas with fluctuating temperatures such as Canada. Additionally, the permeability of ultra high performance concrete was measured to be less than 100 coulombs. This is negligible. To compare, regular concrete has a permeability of around 1800 coulombs. This offers a wide range of applications where corrosive environments would normally penetrate regular concrete and the internal rebar inside of it. By adding silica fumes as a binder, the workability of ultra high performance concrete increases exponentially. Moreover, all the materials used for the mixtures are combinations of fine powders with a grain size smaller than 600 micrometers. Ultra high performance concrete has a very low water to cement ratio, less than 0.25, indicating that only part of the total cement hydrates, therefore cement is replaced with crushed quartz, blast burnished slag, or fly ash. Also by adding silica fume as a binder, it can improve the workability of the UHPC substantially since it fills the voids between all the coarser particles. Additionally, UHPC holds metal fibers, which flex and move with the concrete as it experiences forces. Ultra-high performance concrete has a flexural strength of 49 megapascals, compressive strength of 200 megapascals, and a modulus of elasticity of 35 to 50 gigapascals. In comparison, regular reinforced concrete has a compressive strength of 30 to 40 megapascals. This concrete can take a high degree of compression and in addition to its high fatigue recovery allows it to not only take a larger load but to take more of them before remediation is required. As you can see in figure 5, the metal fibers in the UHPC are quite visible after failure. Their ability to flex and move with the concrete is what, in part, makes it so strong. While ultra high performance concrete is an ideal factor for any extended span such as bridges, skyscrapers, or freeze thaw areas such as footpaths or walkways, the high cost requires it to often be supplemented in vital areas alone. However, the additional strength of the materials allows structures to be designed with smaller beams and slimmer form factors, improving aesthetics and reducing overall weight. As more research is completed, more applications for UHPC will be discovered, developed, and implemented. The United States Federal Highway Administration released a report in 2011 detailing some of the uses of UHPC in the U.S. UHPC has already been used in several locations on highway bridge construction projects. Two projects used UHPC in precast concrete girders in place of conventional concrete. The tensile properties were significant enough for the bridge to be designed without steel shear reinforcement. Two bridges in New York were built with UHPC, acting as a connector between precast elements. Several pedestrian bridges around the world, including one in Sherbrooke, Quebec, 
have been built with UHPC slab decks. There is also a wide variety of applications in rehabilitating bridge structures, seismic retrofitting, repairing deteriorating bridge decks, and precast piles and bridge piers. Additionally, research has been conducted to study the blast and penetration resistance of UHPC for potential use in barriers for various security applications, such as important military or political buildings. One example of ultra-high-performance concrete being used is in the Footbridge of Peace in Seoul, South Korea. It was constructed with ductal, a proprietary UHPC blend used by Lafarge. The bridge is a 120-meter-long arch and has six 20-meter-long precast pie beam sections with no central supports. Each beam is only 1.3 meters tall, and the deck has a thickness of 30 millimeters. It is not surprising that the cost of ultra-high performance concrete is much higher than that of conventional concrete. This is mostly due to the extremely fine steel fibers present in the mix. Current prices for ultra-high performance concrete mix with 2% of steel fibers by volume are around $2,615 per cubic meter. This is about 20 times the cost of normal concrete. Decreasing the fiber content significantly decreases the cost, but also reduces the strength of the material. This is perhaps the greatest barrier in terms of adoption of ultra-high performance concrete, and has led to it being mostly used in small portions to enhance structures. Research is being completed to determine concrete mixes to bring this extremely high cost down. The material that is used the most is steel fibers, similar to that in regular concrete with a reinforcement of steel rebar. This metal is very strong and can flex and bend under a large load without breaking. Some studies have shown that they have tried using brass coated straight steel reinforcements. Although this brass coating creates a large cost, it is more resistant to heat than steel. This is beneficial when curing of the concrete occurs and there is internal heat created. The brass coating will help the steel fibers to avoid deformation during the curing stage. This concludes our presentation. Any questions?